Hello Nikki. hello Transport Evolved. I'm going to speak up because there is someone using some sort of electric chainsaw type thing down the road from me and it's quite loud. I do, I do see your point about range and the test cycles we've got and how to improve them. I love your GPS idea. The idea that you could rent or borrow a little GPS box that just logs your car over a week, say, and then from that can extrapolate daily driving, even altitude change, and if they could correlate that with weather reports as well, you'd actually get a very true representation of someone's electric car range over the course of a given week. I really like that idea. We should, we should do that. But, I mean, it comes down to a fundamental issue that with electric cars, we're telling people how far they can go, comparing to petrol cars and diesel cars, where they're told how many miles per gallon they can get, which is a different metric. So we've kind of inherited a different metric because the car uses a different propulsion source. A fair comparison is miles per kilowatt hour. That's a fair comparison, albeit one that most people won't understand. And that's the problem we're up against here. Charging locations, yes, I... I am erring on the side of if I saw an E-up plugged into an AC quick charge station and I needed an AC quick charge, I would be slightly upset. The correct thing I believe should happen at that point is the E-up should disconnect, allow me to get my 20 minute top up and then reconnect at their piddly three kilowatts. That would be ideal, but I could also see it from the other point of view that they need that range and that power urgently, which leads us down to the fact that there should be multiple charging stations at any one location and multiple different charging types at any one charging station. And I wonder, is there a business model for an intelligent charging location system? So at a given location, you might have a Tesla supercharger, a Chadamo, a CCS, quick AC, and a couple of fast ACs and maybe even some dumb sockets. So you have all of that, but the power requirements that are quite high. So can we not have an intelligent system that goes, well, I don't have enough power to run all of these at max power as is. I only have enough power to run half of it. And if someone plugs into the rapid charger, that's fine. There is 40 kilowatts available. If they plug into a rapid charger and the Tesla quick charge, the Tesla supercharger, then the intelligent system throttles one or more of them down in proportion or takes some off of the Tesla or maybe even asks the people who are plugged in how much they need that charge and restricts power to individual charging stations as needed. That way you could run multiple charging stations at a location and not have to worry about having the power to run all of them at max power all the time. You ask if bosses should lead by example. Yes, they should lead by example. I, I do fundamentally believe that. And one of my pet peeves in the early days of charging infrastructure in the UK, that a lot of the people who were installing charging stations didn't drive electric cars. And it really, really wound me up that they were installing this network and didn't understand how it would be used because they weren't a driver. That's changed somewhat now, which is good. And I think in businesses, yes, the higher up should be more environmentally aware because fundamentally, they probably have a larger carbon footprint, be that because their job has more power and therefore they're responsible for a part of that carbon output, but also they're likely to go on bigger, longer holidays, buy more technology, all of that adds up. So yes, they should lead by example and drive an electric car. Will that make more people likely to change? No, I think that probably just reinforces that electric cars are rich boys' toys or rich men's toys or rich people's toys, however we want to phrase that. What did I want to talk to you about? I've written a story today about Le Poste, uh, which is the French postal service. That's probably not how you say it at all. But through a company called Simbian FSAL, and now Michelin has got a stake in that company, they have been running Renault Kangoo ZE vans, which are all electric Renault vans. We've reviewed one. They're quite fun to drive, although limited on range, which makes them a bit of an issue if you're not in a major city. They're running them and they've adapted them to use a fuel cell range extender, which is quite clever. And supposedly their fuel cell range extender doubles the range of this van. Now, is this the future for hydrogen? Rather than being a propulsion source on its own through the fuel cell and electric motor to become a range extender for electric cars. What do you think? And what does Transport Evolve think? See you tomorrow, Nikki. Bye-bye.